Hello everyone. Thank you so much for coming to my talk today. My name is Kennedy Tokura and I am a senior um, cloud security researcher at Firebolt Analytics. So today I'm going to be talking about security chaos engineering for fun and profit. Um, and you can see my Twitter handle there and feel free to hit me up um, to ask questions about this talk at any point in time. All right, so um, I'm going to cover um, a couple of topics today. Um, we will look at chaos engineering and also security chaos engineering just to, you know, to try to have an understanding of these terms and how they are different. different. And then we will look at um, security chaos engineering in cloud native security to understand, you know, why are we talking about security chaos engineering for cloud native security, right? Uh, afterwards, we will look at, uh, I'm going to walk you through three um, example security chaos engineering experiments and then lastly, I will talk about risk-driven fault injection, which is just my opinionated way of, you know, implementing security chaos engineering. So let's get started. Now, chaos engineering, I believe um, some of us in the audience already have heard about it, and probably some of us are already using it. Um, essentially, um, you know, it is defined, you know, and looking actually at the definition from the principles of chaos.org, you know, chaos engineering is defined as the, as the discipline of experimenting on a system in order to build confidence in the system's capability to withstand troubling conditions in production. So let's um, unpack this definition a little bit. So at the core of, of chaos engineering is, is that um, proactiveness um, to address availability problems um, or problems that affect the performance of, of, of systems, of distributed systems, of virtually any kind of system. And we all know that this, um, this concept was evolved, was introduced by, by, by Netflix a couple of years ago. And already there are a couple of products that are out there that are helping people to, to implement chaos engineering in their, in their, in their companies uh, for their products, for their, their services. And of course, there are a couple of um, resiliency patterns that if efficiently or effectively sort of uh, implement chaos engineering. So we have got things like timeouts, things like bug heads and circuit breakup, right? But let's look at chaos engineering. I mean, security chaos engineering, right? So security chaos engineering is defined by Aaron Reinhardt, who incidentally is the person who's, who, who actually started thinking about how the principles of chaos engineering could, be, could actually be applied to cybersecurity. And he defined it as, you know, as the identification of security control failures through proactive experimentation to build confidence in the system's ability to defend against malicious conditions in production. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of words, but you know, the key things, the key, um, key, key words in this definition is what? Security control failures, proactive experimentation, and you know, defending against malicious um, conditions in production, right? So let's, let's, let's understand this a little bit, all right? So unlike, Chaos engineering that just focuses on, on availability and performance problems. Security chaos engineering is trying to, you know, to be proactive um, within the context of cybersecurity. And when I talk about, about, about security in this, I'm talking about the three pillars of security, meaning confidentiality, integrity, and availability. And the idea is you want to understand, you know, if there are problems um, that impact on these three pillars. Um, in a way that we compromise your system, in a way that might lead to your system be failing. And essentially, in order to do this, you're going to be, you know, injecting failures that we test, you know, the security controls. And we will look, we will look more about, we, I, will, I will talk more about that in the next slide. But, you know, the major problem, the major goal here is to detect security blind spots. And these are things that other security mechanisms, security architectures are actually not looking at at all. So, um, well, how do we go about doing this? Um, so we got our security faults, which are basically, you know, security and um, chaos engineering, security chaos engineering experiments that you are constructing and you are constructing these experiments, you know, or you can also call them as hypotheses um, and injecting them against, you know, the, 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 the um, security controls. Now, we know that um, there are three major security controls 
um, in, in this domain of, of cyber security. We got the preventive controls, for example, identity and access management systems and firewalls. We also got the detective controls, for example, um, um, intrusion detection systems, and also the corrective controls, right? Now, you, the idea of security chaos engineering is to test or to verify whether any of these controls are functioning in a way that they have promised or the vendors have promised they're gonna they're gonna perform. You want to understand if they are failing, if they are if they are working as efficiently as they are, and if they are not, you want to understand how they impact upon um, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. So next, we want to understand why are we even thinking about how we can begin to inject security faults against you know against cloud native infrastructure. Or how can we? Why, what, how, why is it even important for cloud native security? Now we know that cloud native security is complex, right? In fact, it is it is an abstraction of multiple abstractions. Um, the Dead Star we see, the Dead Star graphs we see here, have become very popular ways for kind of you know to, um, visually representing complex systems. And efficiently, effectively, what we see here, uh, you know, every node on this graph um, kind of represents a, a, an application or a, a, a virtual machine or a server. And we got all of these lines that are connecting and are kind of telling us, um, you know, how these nodes are communicating among themselves. And you can see how, 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 how this looks really complicated. Uh, and just imagine how security professionals are able to identify when there are attacks in such an infrastructure, how they're able to analyze attacks, how they're able to detect, defend against attackers. Now, this is not far-fetched, right? Um, Bruce Schneier, who is one of the very um, popular fi um, figures or people in cybersecurity said, a, a, almost a decade ago, he said that the future of digital systems is complexity. And complexity is the worst enemy of security. And exactly, this is what we are seeing today. This is the kind, these are the kind of problems that we are seeing within the domain of security. Um, complex systems like um, cloud native infrastructure um, make the, the job of security professionals um, very difficult um, because on the first hand, they got to understand how the systems work and then they have to defend against um, defend to protect the systems to harden them. And, and that is exactly the problem we are facing today um, in cybersecurity. And actually, there are a couple of reports that have come out, you know, to kind of solidify this statement. Um, for example, we have the Cloud Native um, Threat Report. Uh, actually, this was released last year by Aqua Security. And you know, that according to them, after conducting a couple of experiments um, deploying cloud native infrastructure in the wild, what I saw is, you know, as many as 160 attacks per day against this infrastructure. And that was just in the first half of 2020. Similarly, um, there was uh, a report that was released um, um, just a few months ago by, the, um, by IBM. And in this report, they observed that there's a 150 increase of cloud vulnerabilities you know, in the last five years, 150 increase. Um, and the point to note here is it's not just about, it's not just that um, these attacks are increasing, but also the complexity of the attacks are getting um, the, 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 I mean, the, the attacks are actually getting more sophisticated. They are not conducted just by script kiddies. And you got um, highly organized criminals that are actually involved in conducting these attacks. And, and today, so it means that, you know, defending against cloud native infrastructure becomes more and more difficult. Now, I know it, it might be that, um, Maybe some of us might be thinking that, oh, there are already cloud native security tools. And of course, you know, if you have a look at the, um, the, the, the security and compliance landscape of the CNCF, you got a lot of tools out there, you know, great tools um, that are looking at um, cloud native infrastructure, trying to protect it. They are implementing different dimensions of cloud native security, which is cool. but from what I've just said, from, from the research just coming, we observe that, you know, these attacks are still on the increase. You know, these attacks are becoming more complicated. And from, from my view, um, the, 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 tool, the, the methodology of the tools um, have to actually um, evolve. Um, we, we need tools that are not just 
looking at the abstraction layers, but tools that are able to understand how attackers are moving from one abstraction layer to the other. And I'm going to be um, deep, then going deeper into this um, in the next slide. So for us to understand um, exactly what I'm trying to talk about right now, you know, the forces of cloud native security is a great model that was proposed by the Kubernetes security team um, a few years ago. And this model, um, what it does, one of the one of the major um, pieces of information it passes to us is about you know the abstraction layers that compose a cloud native infrastructure, which 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 means code layer, um, container layer, cluster, and cloud layer. And this the, the, this model tells us or helps us to understand uh, as security professionals we get to deploy security mechanisms at every layer of abstraction. Um, and this is essentially a defense in depth um, approach and um, security is got to be layered, right? However, this is, also a this is also a cloud native infrastructure. And what we observe is cloud native inf infrastructure actually has a quite large attack surface. You know, this multiple layers of abstraction, um, they introduce complexity and they, and they effectively expose a wider attack surface meaning that attackers can take advantage of this, um, this wide attack surface. So for example, we get on this diagram here, we can see the code layer, also the um, Docker layer uh, or the container layer, the, the, you know, the cluster layer as well as the cloud layer. Uh, but you know, what attackers see is just one point. You know, attackers just, you know, they, they don't break this into layers. Attackers just see a target uh, maybe a target of opportunity. They go in there and they execute the attack um, either patiently or with, um, with the, or they try to understand the environment as they uh, as they conduct the attack and eventually they achieve their goals. And at, I think that um, we as a defenders we ha also have to be able to defend our systems, you know, from this similar viewpoint that attackers are are, are using. We got to be able to look at the infrastructure not just as you know um, silos of, of or layers of abstraction, but we have to evolve tools that are able to look at the, the, the connecting layers and are able to understand the relationships between each of these layers. And I think that this is one of the value propositions of, 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 of security chaos engineering because um, security chaos engineering is actually um, layer agnostic it is not dependent on any of these layers. It can actually be, be injected or it can actually be implemented across the entire stack of the cloud native infrastructure, actually from one point. And that gives the view of understanding which of these layers are weak, um, makes us to understand, okay, um, what are the relationships uh, across the, the entire layers? What are the weaknesses across the layers and how we can deploy systems that effectively defend against um, these kinds of attacks. All right, so let us have a look at a few um, experiments, example experiments. And the first one is the public bucket experiment, which is um, it, which is actually a very simple one um, because you know S3 buckets are being um, are one of the most um, attacked um, resources in the cloud. Um, so let us walk through this 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 example. So firstly, we see that the attacker here creates a user called Bob, um, and Bob is able to get access or is able to enumerate a AWS buckets. He gets one bucket, creates a malicious policy, and 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 eventually he takes over that bucket. And um, you know, after taking over the bucket, he's he can do a lot of things. He can you know just um, read the data in that bucket. Maybe they are crucial information. He can actually also um, you know you know in uh, exfiltrate that data away. And for so if you inject, if you conduct this kind of attack uh, or this kind of um, experiment, you know a couple of things um, that are important here is to understand whether the security controls that are supposed to either detect or prevent this attack are uh, actually working as they should. Now, if they fail, you know that you got, um, you got a problem to fix. And even if they are able to trigger some alerts, um, you, you have to understand, you have to um, analyze these alerts and see whether that information that is being spitted out uh, makes enough sense for you as a security professional. Let's look at um, 
The next, the next um, experiment is the bucket ransomware experiment, and of course, this also is an is one of the um, attack methods that is really, really on the rise, and it's causing a lot of problem. Um, it is this this experiment is a build up of the previous one, and um, there is just one single point that is different, which is the, the bucket encryption, um, which happens after the attacker selects one or more buckets. Now, in this case, um, the important point here, or one of a possible hypothesis will be, you know, to, to, to verify whether all of the counter ransomware uh, measures that might have been put in place are actually efficient. Um, and I've observed that, you know, since ransomware became a hot topic, um, cloud service providers or, you know, different tools, different um, security vendors, are beginning to come up with different tools, different uh, mechanisms, uh, you know, that about how to defend against these attacks, and so it's gonna be it's gonna be very useful uh, to understand here whether the backups that were made of the, uh, you know the, the backups the backups for the buckets um, were they useful at all? Uh, were you able to resume um, you know you know operations for your customers uh, in the midst of these ransomware? Um, based on the backups, uh, were you able to conduct an incident response in, in, in a way that was efficient? You know, these are kind of um, the, the possible hypotheses that might be framed uh, within the context of this ransomware experiment. Now, let's look at the last one. And the last one here um, is, is a little bit more, more complicated, right? It is actually different because here um, Bob um, actually goes into the EKS cluster and from there he compromises a pod and from there he he moves over to compromise the S3 bucket before encrypting it right and um oh sorry and essentially um the point here is right you know bob bob is able to you know he's able to move uh, from the from the um, cloud con control plane into the into the kubernetes cluster that means this attack itself is actually more complicated and the attacker might actually confuse the, the defender um, if the tools that are, for example, in this case, if you got um, a cloud work, workload protection platform that is deployed for on the EKS cluster, and that plot that and CWPP is not kind of speaking in any way with any of the AWS native tool or maybe the CSPM, um, then this type, kind of attack is going to be much more difficult uh, to defend against. All right, so. Let us talk a little bit now about the risk-driven fault injection. And this is just um, actually um, based off of my research. And it is a way where, like, let's say a framework that enables us to apply security chaos engineering, you know, in our environments. And I thought about this because after speaking with several people about um, security chaos engineering, uh, I realized that, you know, it is a, it's a topic that is a, a little bit difficult to, to get a buy-in of the of the management uh, which is kind of typical of security because we are talking we talk in abstract terms but at the end of the day by you being able to map whatever finding you got to to, to cyber risk um, it, it makes more sense to speak to the management about about security cares engineering and um, so this the risk reinforced injection has got five pillars execute monitor analyze plan and knowledge and we're going to look at them one after the other so starting with execute so by execute um, you got to have an aim for your experiment so it's not just um, to experiment for the sake of causing chaos you know but we want to take away the chaos so you got to have a, a, an aim for your experiment you got to craft a hypothesis like like some of the examples we just we just we just we just had a look at and then next you have to like have a scope which means that you have to kind of um, determine the scale, the depth, the intensity of the experiments. And most importantly is about coordination. You got to coordinate with the teams um, that are gonna be involved in these experiments. Maybe this could be the, the DevOps. Um, this could be, um, this could actually be, you know, um, different people that will be involved in, you know, in, 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 in this particular experiment. And it could also be something like, like, um, it could, it could also be like a, a chaos um, exercise uh, and you got to do it with them. And um, one other part very important here is about the steady state, right? So the steady state is the state of the infrastructure before chaos is being injected. 
and that has to be kind of um, that has to be kept either either by using infrastructure as code or it, either storing um, the, 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 the storing the framework or the, of the environment in a database. The next point is about monitoring. Monitoring is very important because you know when you begin to insert or you, when you begin to conduct chaos uh, chaos experiments, you got to understand um, you got to understand how it impacts your environment, and you need to have clear visibility into the environment um, either using things like logging, like observability, like tracing, um, so that you are able to stop the experiment if it begins to impact your environment negatively and uh, so that you can also uh, recover to the steady state that I talked about um, as part of the execute pillar. Right, so the next part um, is analyze and this is also another important part because uh, at the end of the day, at the end of the result of the, of the experiment, you wanna get at the results uh, you want to analyze it, you want to understand what failed, why it failed, um, you want to understand whether your hypothesis was proven or not. And you know, this is just an example, this is the OWASP risk rating methodology, where um, you know, it goes from analyzing the threats, you know, the threat agents to the attack vectors in the end, it also looks at the technical impact and also the business impact. So, um, it is also a framework that could be used for security chaos engineering just to analyze also you know the results of the experiment so the next part you know the next stage is you know it's about planning so at the end of the day you want to plan the next steps you know uh, you want to um, plan how you will patch your system you want to plan how you will carry that information because the, the value you get out of out of security chaos and journey experiments, um, it's very valuable. That is a great thing about it. This is knowledge that is very useful for um, security operations. It's very useful for threat modeling sessions. Um, it's useful for also doing awareness training for your employees. And this is cool because in this case, you're talking about evidence-based knowledge and not some knowledge that's based on, um, uh, on some theory or knowledge that's based on some assumptions. All right, and the last part of this, um, the risk-driven fault injection is the knowledge piece. So I just talked about the knowledge and as much as possible, this knowledge has to be kept in a sort of knowledge piece so that it can be reused. Uh, and there are a lot of ways that you can use this knowledge um, either by sharing it with um, the, trend hunt, uh, the threat hunting team or the incident response teams, um, or you could also use it as part of the data uh, for your uh, machine learning um, uh, machine learning models. All right, so yeah, so in case you're actually someone who is interested in learning more about security chaos engineering, I, I have published a couple of papers and feel free to, to, to most of them are publicly available and uh, reading it will give you more insight. And I was also very lucky to be um, one of the contribu contributing authors for the Security Chaos Engineering uh, O'Reilly book, the very first one that was published by Aaron Reinhardt and Kelly Shortridge. Um, it's a great book for you to also read to get more understanding about Security Chaos Engineering. Yeah, okay, so that brings me to the end of my talk. Um, thank you so much for listening. I am super excited to get to hear from you. Um, I've got my Twitter handle there. Uh, feel free to reach out to me and uh, talk to me about your, your, your understanding, ask me questions, um, criticize um, the things that I've said. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the conference. <laughs>